Hello, my name is Henrik Johnson and today I'm going to be demoing Underscore Wallet. I have just installed it, so the first thing I'm going to do is to start it up. Immediately when you start Underscore Wallet, you discover one of the features that makes Underscore Wallet unique, which is the visual password. Instead of defining your password as just an alphanumerical string like you do in any other application, in this application you can define your password as a series of gestures. For instance, let's say I define my password as one swipe on the left, one swipe on the right, and two dots in the middle. Done. I have to do it again since this is my first time. One swipe on the left, one on the right, and the two in the middle. After you do this, you are greeted with the startup screen of underscore wallet. Here you have the number of categories of items that you can add to it. As an example, I'm going to go in and create a sample credit card. Enter a name. If I click the icon, I can also go in and change the icon of it. And if none of the icons in the list matches, I can also use the camera or the camera roll catalog to choose any picture I want as my icon. A number. For the expiration date, I can either enter it normally or I have a nifty little helper that allows me to enter the expiration date or indeed any date in an easy manner. You can also see as I move through here that depending on what I enter the keypad is different and for the phone number I can also look it up in my address book I just happen to, to have American Express's phone number and then let's also enter the web page And also, if I want to enter a password, there's a great little password generator with a built-in strength uh, measure at the very top. That's a really hard password to enter though, but there is an option in the settings, I will get to that later, which if you set it, when you click on the link here, it will automatically put the password in your clipboard so that you can easily paste it into your login screen on a web page. Okay, I'm now going to go back and do something a little bit more interesting, hopefully. Which is, I'm going to add an image. You can take an image either from the camera or from the catalog camera roll. I'm going to grab one from the camera roll. A nice sunset. When you add a picture from the camera roll, make sure that you delete it manually. Currently, Apple does not allow uh, third-party applications to delete pictures from the camera. And when you have a camera you can also click it and view it like you zoom in, zoom out like you can in the normal picture application. You can also add the location where the picture was taken by just clicking here and it will grab your GPS coordinates. When you look at this the GPS coordinates will actually be a link into Google Maps where the picture was taken. The last thing I'm gonna do is add one more item which is a journal entry. And in a journal entry, you're also able to record a voice memo. So if I click the record button here, one, two, three, four, testing. And play it back. One, two, three, four, testing. And both the image and the voice recording is completely encrypted, so no matter who gets a hold of your phone or has access to your phone, they cannot get to it without knowing the password that you did. One last thing to note about editing entries is that if you go into type up here, you can choose which kind of entry that you're editing. And it has a bunch of predefined types, but it, at the very end, you also have one entry called custom. If you go into here, you can manually edit exactly which fields you want. So for instance, if I want to add a password field to this, I can just do that right there. And I also want to drag it up to here. Done. Done. And you can now see that there's a new field called passwords in the entry. I'm now going to go into a couple of more advanced topics. If you click the edit button here in the list, you can rearrange or delete any item you want. The few items that you see in the list that are undeletable as of now contain other items. So you can only delete 
uh, folders that have no items in them. Also, when you go into edit mode, you have a new button on the lower right, which if you click it, allows you to first item, sort the list. So if I click that, you can see that the list that you saw is now sorted alphabetically. The second item, types. This allows you to edit the predefined types that you have in the application of items. So if I go into bank account here, for instance, I can edit what information I want to be able to enter for a, a bank account. So if I remove this, or as before with the custom editors, add an item, it's very easy to completely customize exactly so that it matches what you want your wallet to be. If you edit one of the predefined item, you can press default and swap back to the way that the fields are by default when you install the application. You can also add completely new types. And new types, you can also delete. You cannot delete a built-in type, but you can edit what it contains. The last advanced feature available is passwords. This allows you to define any number of multiple levels of security in your wallet. So if I add one more password here, which is the same but tilted to the right, done, done. This allows me to choose which of the two passwords that I should use when I encrypt an item. Uh, any level always allows you to see the level above it. So if you enter the level two password, you will see level one and level two items. You can also delete a level or change the password for a specific level. So let's go back and look at our image. Now, when I edit this image, I now have an extra field which allows me to set the level. And if I put that to level two, and go back, if I enter the level one password now, the image isn't visible. Only when I enter the level two password can you see the image. The reason for that, if I go back to the password dialog, the reason for that is that only items that have encrypt name off or have a password level lower than what you have entered are visible. Encrypt names basically means that the names of the items are encrypted as well. And you can turn this on for the base level as well. And this means that whenever you go into the wallet, you will immediately be prompted with a password. That's wrong. One final item here. When you're looking Add an item. At the very bottom you have a send as email button. If you click this, you can send the contents of that field as an email. But keep in mind that email it is inherently insecure. Take heed. Finally, I would like to point out that underscore wallet has a number of settings and if you go into the normal iPhone settings application, scroll down to the very bottom, you can find those there. And they're pretty well documented, so I go, won't go into details. One thing that is pretty useful is the clipboard password. It's off by default for security reasons, but if you enable this, whenever you follow a link, any password on that item will be put in the clipboard so that you can easily paste it into the login form of that web page. That is really all I had to say. Thank you for using Underscore Wallet, and I hope you're happy with your purchase.